Mon envie, trouve-toi, parce qu'il m'a bien manqué toi. Le fait qu'il te parle pour moi, ça, oui, vraiment gâté, libé fatigue moi. Tahé, Andy, tahé. Rishi, in this country, everywhere you look, sugar. Sugar cane everywhere. It's hard to imagine that sugar is in terminal decline in this country. Yes. Yes, you're right. You see sugar everywhere, sugar cane everywhere. But it was more than this before. It's gone down because subsidies from Europe have been withdrawn, right? Yes. It's gone down. Yes, we had the preferential tariffs uh, from the European Union when, where we would sell our sugar. So we had a better price for it. But then with the liberalization of the sugar prices, so we don't have uh, that uh, competitive advantage over uh, other countries like India, Brazil and Thailand. Does it matter if sugar declines? No, it doesn't matter uh, if sugar declines in Russia because uh, the country is prepared uh, to uh, go uh, to survive on new pillars like uh, we've been developing uh, the manufacturing sector, which is quite stable right now. Uh, the tourism industry is flourishing. You've got the ICT sector. What's that? The ICT is about all new technologies, IT enabled services. You've got the financial services, the offshore, uh, you've got um, the banking sector, which is thriving. You yourself saw banks everywhere in this country. Uh, you've got also uh, the knowledge uh, sector, which we are trying to develop here in Mauritius. What do you mean the knowledge sector? Knowledge sector, uh, Mauritius wants to become a knowledge hub in the region, which means that uh, Mauritius wants to provide training in all fields like starting from uh, simple certificate courses to master's degrees or even uh, post-doctorate degrees. Poil en fait, te bien fité, seulement jamais trouve-toi danser. Tous les temps, te n'est qu'à ciser, n'est que la tête qui bouge, bouge. The foundation of Mauritius's current economic success is, as Rishi says, tourism. And we are on our way to the famed and fabulous Tusrock Hotel. Here you can spend huge amounts of money to look at the sea, swim in a variety of pools, play golf, eat loads and lounge about on smart loungers. For every guest there are at least two staff to wait on their every need. Tourism has brought wealth to Mauritius and it's also brought opportunities for Mauritians. Like Clancy Romeo, executive assistant manager of La Touche Rock. He started at the bottom and has worked his way to the top. In the 80s I started as a security officer in the hotel and uh, I was very very interested in how other people were running the hotel so I interfere uh, a lot in other departments seeing what they are doing. I was very interested to know what these people were doing. And of course, the food attracted me also a bit. I've walked in the kitchen, in the restaurant, seeing the whiskey at the bars. And this is where I said to myself, I want to join. I want to leave the security department and join the hospitality industry and serve people. So the tourist industry has been good for you? Definitely. Definitely it has been very fruitful for me and uh, and it doesn't stop here how do you feel about tourists do you in any way feel resentful about tourists and their wealth no no what about people who live nearby because you know we, we pass through fields where there are really obviously very very poor people do they feel resentful there I think the village in the vicinities, they all live with the hotel around. If you see, we are the direct workers, the direct people that face the tourists every day. But these people, they are people that cultivate vegetables, fruits. There are others who own boats, who offers excursion. They all need the tourist industry. They all need the tourists to, in a way, to survive. It's clearly boom time for the Mauritius tourist industry. But can the boom last? I meet one dissenting voice. He's Ram Sigobin, the leader of the small Lalit party. He thinks the tourist bubble is likely to burst. 
At the moment, it's just under 1 million tourists a year, about 900,000. Their, their plans to make it 2 million. Well, Mauritius will not be able to stand 2 million tourists. Why not? Because already just about all the coastal area has been taken up. And the tourists who come to Mauritius, it's a long way for, from most of our markets, which are mainly Europe. And it's very expensive. It's getting more and more expensive, the trip by air. And you, once you, and the tourists come here mainly for the beach and the coast, the sea. Now you're running out of coast. But there's no sign of a slump yet in the tourist industry. Apparently all, all the hotels are booked, you know, virtually the whole year round. But I think that to, to rely on tourism in the long run is going to be very dangerous because we know that in Europe, for example, many of our friends in, in, in Britain are now saying that they're thinking about not going on long trips. You know, I think there's more and more a kind of ecological conscience that's developing in Europe. And people, you know, going for cycling holidays. And Mauritius relies on what they called a eau de gamme, in other words, the upmarket tourist industry. All the hotels are very, very expensive. And being an expensive destination, it's obviously a limited destination. And it's also very exposed to things like a kind of recession. Now, there's no doubt that we're going into some kind of slowdown. The States is pretty obvious, Japan's pretty obvious, Europe it's coming. There's no doubt about it. And if you're then relying on this upmarket tourism, it's going to slow down. Liberté, liberté, bisla. As we go around this country, it's becoming obvious that although English is the official language, it's much less spoken than French and certainly much less spoken than Creole. Now, why is that? Okay, uh, Creole is the mother tongue of all Mauritians. Uh, Creole is a mix of uh, French, uh, some English languages, African languages and uh, some Indian languages because as you know the French settlers came here, uh, they brought the slaves and the slaves had to learn some words of French, they, so it was a broken kind of French and then when the bridge came, uh, some British words added to the language and also when the Indian, Indian laborers came, so uh, they brought their languages, so it, it's all a mix of languages. Now why they so uh, little English? is that when the English uh, colonized the country, they didn't colonize it to settle on it. In fact, where the French settlers did not leave the country. There was an agreement between the English and the French that, okay, we British, we will uh, do all the administrative job of the country. And the French, who had the real large estates of sugarcane, they were left with their property. So their property were not seized. The British let them do their business, uh, do their all uh, their activities as they, as they used to do. So the French language remained. All, the, all those people who were on uh, working on the states, the slaves mainly, they, uh, the language continued to flourish. And when the Indians came, they brought uh, new words uh, with English, but English uh, had, did not have any cultural impact on the population.